Master Megatron, as per your orders, I have captured the one called Mana Moon. Yes, finally you will discover the secret of the ultimate commander deck. With this, the Autobots are doomed. I'm releasing him from the chamber now. Sup, losers? You guys trying to help me find the worst commander? What? Starscream, you got the shattered glass mana moot. Are you disloyal or just stupid? I'm stupid! I'm stupid! What's up, planeswalkers? How you doing? How you doing? Oh, don't worry. I was in disguise. <laughs> To finish things out for the viewer request week, we have a fun one. Soundwave, Sonic Spy, an Esper and one colorless 5-4 robot which says whenever one or more creature tokens you control deals combat damage to a player, XL target instant or sorcery card with mana value equal to the damage dealt from their graveyard. Copy it. You may cast the copy without paying its mana cost. If you do, convert Soundwave. Now before I go over what Soundwave turns into, I want to mention this side of Soundwave is what we're primarily playing around. Now, Soundwave Sonic Spy converts into Soundwave Superior Captain, which reads, whenever you cast a spell with a odd mana value, convert Soundwave. If you do, create Ravage, a legendary 3-3 black robot artifact creature token with menace and death touch. Whenever you cast a spell with even mana value, convert Soundwave. If you do, create Laser Beak, a legendary 2-2 blue robot artifact creature token with flying and hexproof. Now, unlike your grandma's Esper deck, our Wincon won't involve boring your opponents to death. Today our plan is Trifold, Token Swarm, Mill, and Aristocrat Drain. The one of them works. Oh, and did I mention we'll be stealing a lot of spells for some fun? Now I know you saw the price tag of the deck. Before you completely detach that catalytic converter, just know that there are other means for obtaining expensive magic cards. If you have a commander you want featured in a video, leave it in the comments or join our channel discord. Starting our creature lineup, we have Ruin Crab as we want cards in our opponent's graveyard so that we can steal spells with our commander's ability. Blood Artist is part of our Aristocrat strategy. Corpse Knight also works to a similar goal, but instead he pings one creature's ETB. Elias Ilkor, Sadistic Pilgrim, which gains us life on creature ETB and pings one creature's die. Zulaport Cutthroat, yet another Aristocrat, but unlike Blood Artist, it pings each opponent. Monastery Mentor to make some tokens with prowess so that we can hit our opponent hard enough to steal any spell we want. Psy, Master Thothrus for some flying tokens. The Cyber Controller, which does two things buffs artifact creatures and mills our opponents and the extra creatures is a nice bonus. Zelix Sanity Flare which has a technical combo but that requires a Christmas miracle to work so for the meantime this is a good token generator that works off our mill strategy. Company commander to make some tokens and give death touch to our board on swing so our opponents are less inclined to block our stuff. Curiosity Crafter gives us a great benefit as when our tokens deal combat damage to a player, we now get to draw a bunch of cards along with the stuff our commander already does. Mirkwood Bats, which for us is the best aristocrat in our deck since it pings on creation of the token and the death of it. Murmuring Mystic for even more flying attackers. Nesting Dovehawk to make even more tokens and it can quickly become a beefcake. Sakashima of a thousand faces which completely breaks the flipped version of our commander as we get to keep all those legendary tokens. Spark Double to double up a token maker or we do have some planeswalkers for it to copy. Star Scream Power Hungry is a flavor add and Monarch just makes commander more fun. Tolerant Sky Summoner which can make a lot of flying attackers, hopefully you are starting to get the picture. Tessa Karlov to speed up the clock on our drain. Vanguard Suppressors because it makes tokens and gives us a lot of cards provided we can connect. Consuming Aberration which works well with our mill plan and our commander can get some extra spells from the cards our opponents milled so we can continue a bit of a cycle. Marnius Calgar is a very powerful draw engine in the deck and a combo piece which I'll be covering at the end of the video. Slaughterman of Many Colors which does everything our deck wants to do. Cast extra spells? Check. Mill opponent? Check. Cast spells from our opponent's graveyard? Check. Junkwinder, which is a real pain for most opponents, and it makes blocking our tokens a pipe dream. For our Planeswalkers and Battle, we have Kaito, Dancing Shadow, which does a lot of things for our commander, like helping our creatures get in, drawing cards, and it even makes a token. Tasha the Witch Queen, for even more tokens with her static ability, and her minus three lets us take even more spells out of our opponent's graveyard for our use. In a battle, since there's nowhere else to put it, is the invasion of Segovia, because it makes tokens and then it turns into a scary creature that lets us convoke out all our non-creature spells. On the topic of spells, we have Dread Summons for mill and tokens, 
grand crescendo for some surprise indestructible and oh the army is pretty good too maddening cacophony to mill half the library of our opponents so we have plenty of options mind grind is yet another brutal mill spell that we can size appropriately mystic reflection to either make a bunch of non-legendary creatures out of our tokens or turn our opponent's creatures into a bunch of one ones protecting negotiators because since we'll have a lot of creatures we might as well play a counter spell that works with them brute born defense for even more surprise indestructible but this time we get to populate Windfall gets us some fresh cards, and we don't mind discarding spells to the graveyard, and again, our opponents are filling their graveyards as well. Deny the Witch for some counter magic that punishes the caster based on the spell's CMC. Arenicus, a vile duplication to copy a creature we control, even the legendaries, so yes, this card can do some crazy stuff. Whispering Madness is a repeatable wheel, which is always a fun way to fill a graveyard. Gale's Redirection for some counter magic that plays into the stealing spell theme of the deck. Cut your losses to really get a full selection of spells from your opponent's deck. Reach the multiverse because it mills, and why stop it stealing spells? Let's steal some creatures for planeswalkers as well. Hour of Reckoning as an emergency board wipe that ignores our tokens. For our artifacts and enchantments, as always, I'll start with the ramp. First, we have Soul Ring, Arcane Signet, Chromatic Lantern, and of course, the Talisman Cycle. Talisman of Dominance, Talisman of Hierarchy, and Talisman of Progress. The rest of the toys we have Alter of the Brew to have the token theme play into our mill theme as well. Skull Clamp for more cards, and we have a lot of tokens to spare. Alter of Dementia, which is one way to use the extra tokens we make with our commander's flip side. Mesmeric Orb for maximum mill. Just be careful of your own library with this card since we're making a bunch of permanents. Bitter Blossom for more flying tokens, and One Life is barely a setback. Court of Cunning for more cards, and again, Monarch is fun. Mind crank so that we can stack our triggers with our commander so that the opponent first mills and then we steal a spell. Ashnaut's altar for the combo potential and it's a good way to use extra tokens. Memory erosion for some added mill. Psychic corrosion to mill our opponents and all the extra cards in our deck work really well with it. The same is true for Phoenix's tutelage, only mono colored decks may have a nightmare dealing with the mill trigger. Teferi's tutelage is like the last cards, only we get a loot on its ETB. Anointed procession for even more tokens and it's part of the combo in the deck. Thopter Spy Network for, you guessed it, more flying attackers, but the extra card also helps. Lastly, Shark Typhoon because big flying sharks are fun and we plan on casting a lot of non-creature spells. For the meta base, follow your budget, but like always, there is a meta base you're free to copy found in the deck list in the description of this video. My land recommendation for this deck is Takanuma Abandoned Mire. Recursion on a land is always useful. In today's combo section, I'll be going over one of the combos featured in the deck, but there is another for you to find. For this combo, we need Kalgar and Ashnaut's Altar, Anointed Procession, and 6 mana. We start the combo by activating Kalgar to make a total of 4 tokens that we can then sack to Ashnaut's Altar to get enough mana to activate the ability again. This loop gives us near infinite card draw, death triggers, colorless mana, and tokens. Eventually though, your library will run out of cards. That's going to do it for today's video, and let me know how I did or tell me about your favorite Esper card in the comments below. If you'd like to support the channel, then subscribe or join today, and I'll see you in the next video. Peace.